you've just gotten into the tech space and you're confused on the field that you should go into this video is definitely for you where i'll be explaining common fields in tech and how you can navigate your way into them hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is chisel and i'm a software engineer and youtuber based in lagos nigeria if you're not new here good to have you back so today we're going to jump right into the topic we're going to be talking about common fields in the tech space that you can go into if you're new into the tech space and you don't really know much about them in this video i'll be explaining them the things that you need to learn them and how you can succeed in those fields for the purpose of this video i'm going to be focusing only on roles in the tech space that involve coding but we did another video for non-coding roles turn on post notification so you know when that video is going to come out so the first key we're going to be looking at is front-end development or front-end engineering front-end development or front-end engineering involves building things that you can see on a website that are responsible for everything the user interacts with on the website i'm talking about layouts animations buttons, colors, I mean everything you see on a website is basically built by a front-end developer. Front-end developers work mostly with UI UX designers and product designers to bring these designs to life and to see how these things can be hosted on a website. Besides the layout, front-end engineers are also responsible for the speed of the website. So if your website isn't loading well, it's probably due to the image resolution the front-end engineer used. And those are the few things that you'll be doing as a front-end engineer. So if you're someone who likes the technical part of design and you'd like to bring design to life in a very realistic form, I feel like you should go into front-end engineering. It's a very interesting field. A typical example of how you can see the responsibilities of a front-end engineer is using YouTube, for instance. If you go to YouTube and you hover on a video, the, YouTube, the video starts playing, the YouTube video starts playing. Or if you click a particular button and the button changes color, that's exactly what a front-end developer is concerned about. So how can you learn front-end engineering? Front-end engineering would require you to learn HTML, CSS, um, JavaScript, some front-end frameworks as well like Vue.js, Angular. I mean, there are a lot of them. But if you'd like to go into front-end engineering, I would recommend front-end masters. They are like a site where you can learn most of these front-end engineering concepts from start to finish. So yeah, if front-end engineering is for you, please leave a comment in the comment section. We move over to the next field, which is back-end engineering. Back-end engineering is a field where you build the back-end side of the website. Think of front-end engineering as your face, and think of back-end engineering as your brain. So back-end engineering or back-end engineers do everything that involves the behind the curtains of the website. They deal with data management, they collect data, they try to manipulate data and just make sure data is readily available for the front-end engineer to use. Engineers are also skilled with building APIs, application programming interface that front-end developers can read from and they can use from as well. Think of back-end engineering like when you want to log into a website and you want to sign up or forget password, they're the ones that are in charge of all those technicalities. Back-end engineers also do things like payment verification, say you want to subscribe to YouTube Premium for instance and the back-end engineer is in charge of reading your debit card and making sure your payment has been processed before the front-end engineer can now get a go-ahead to display um, YouTube premium benefits for you as a user. So back-end engineers and front-end engineers work hand-in-hand -hand a lot and there are two roles that complement each other. So the front-end engineer would read from the back-end engineer's database, see what the back-end engineer has to display. Let's say you go on YouTube and you're looking for like the history of the things that you've watched before. It's the front-end developer's job to show you those content, but it's also the back-end developer's job to provide that data for you. So back-end engineers deal with a couple of frameworks a lot. They use Java, Python, Ruby, Kafka, Node.js, Django, MongoDB. I feel like this field is something that's still growing and it's something that's also in demand in a lot of tech industries and tech firms. Third is full stack engineering. A full stack engineer is a combination of a front-end engineer and a back-end engineer. I've seen some front-end engineers that have 
um, upskilled to be back-end engineers and I've also seen some back-end engineers that have also upskilled to be front-end engineers so if you're doing the both you're like a combination of a front-end and back-end engineer which makes, which makes you a full-stack developer your job as a full-stack developer is to debug and troubleshoot both the front-end part of the website and the back-end part of the website and you're heavily in charge of making sure that the two sides of the website are working perfectly the fourth field we like to look at is mobile developer or being a mobile engineer. Mobile developers deal with the layout of how a software looks on the mobile phone. If you notice some products that we use like Spotify, Netflix, YouTube, have their web versions and also have their mobile application. Mobile developers are in charge of building those layouts on your mobile phone. They work hand in hand with UI UX designers or product designers to bring those designs to life and also handle the technicalities of those designs. So mobile developers, you could see them as people that develop both the front and the back, just like a website, but they do the both. Mobile developers are in charge of layouts, they are in charge of um, making sure the app is scalable and also making sure that the performance is okay. Now, if you want to go into the mobile development field, there are three fields that you could go into. Either you build for native Android. Native Android is that you're building for only devices that run on the Android operating system and you'll be needing Java, Kotlin. Although some companies have migrated to Kotlin, but I feel like some companies still have legacy code that they have written in Java. So it's either you use Java or Kotlin or you use Swift. Swift is for devices or applications that run only on the Android sorry the ios device use flutter for cross-platform or react native for cross-platform as well so depending on the field that you choose you can actually be a mobile developer if you love the way applications look on your phone and you like to develop something like that fifth is being a devops engineer when you think of developer operations devops you're thinking of where scalability comes in and reliability concerns as well when you're shipping an application and you want to make sure that people in every location people with any device or any bandwidth as well can use your application that's what a devops engineer does a devops engineer deals with automation of deployment of code testing and maintenance of infrastructure as well. A DevOps engineer will build tools that would enable developers to upgrade, test and maintain the applications that they've built and they'll be doing a lot of CI, CD um, development, continuous integration, continuous development, a whole lot of that stuff. So DevOps engineers use a couple of technologies like Java, Jenkins, Go, Docker, I mean a couple of DevOps engineering tools. So if you would like to go into DevOps engineering, these are the fields or these are the tools that you can pick up. Fifth is data science. Data science is a big umbrella for things that involve anything data. Let's say you're dealing with numbers in a company or in a startup. You actually need a data scientist to make meaning out of these numbers. Our markets need to get inventory. Businesses need to know how their um, business is scaling, how much profit they are making and things they should do to make more profit. I mean, there's a lot of data moving around. Data is like the new oil in tech because thousands and millions of data comes in and people need to make sense out of this data. So if you want to be data scientists, there are several fields on data science. We have data engineering, we have data analytics, we have data science as well. Data engineers are mostly, mostly focused on ingesting this data and making sure that this data is available for data analysts to use. You'll be focusing more on building pipelines and making sure that these pipelines are maintained and data is readily available. While data analysts deal with more of analyzing the data, querying these databases to draw insights from this data and build developer dashboards as well. <clears throat> Thirdly is data science. Data scientists go a step further to predict, make predictions on those data using machine learning algorithms and all those other technical stuff. So data science requires a couple of tools, but the most common tool amongst all these fields is SQL. You'll be using a little bit of Python or Scala or R. Analysts use Power BI. Data scientists use other tools as well to be able to make predictions, machine learning algorithms, like I mentioned, and all that. So if you're someone who is keen about numbers and who is excited about seeing a lot of data and making sense of it, then data science is a field that you should check out. And now the last field we're going to be looking at in the tech space that will require a couple of technical stuff is cybersecurity. A lot of companies are using several systems and these systems are prone to like 
breaches, security breaches, and networks as well. So they need people that can help them secure those networks and make sure that their services and networks and infrastructure and systems are bulletproof from attacks. As a cyber security expert, we're going to be involved in protecting systems and assets from unauthorized access and theft. We're going to be identifying potential threats, developing security measures and protocols, conducting security audits and penetration testing. So for you to start your career in cyber security, there are a couple of certifications and exams that you can take before you even pivot deeper into the field cyber security. First is CompTIA Ethical Hacking Certificate or CISSP. When you're done with the certification, next is to start gaining experience through volunteer work or shadowing someone that's already a cyber security expert. And then you can specialize on the particular cyber security field that you should go into. Lastly, you're going to be staying up to date with trends in the cyber security space. So yeah, we've mentioned a couple of fields in the tech space that would require you to code. First is front-end engineering, back-end engineering, DevOps engineering, mobile developers, cyber security, and being a full stack developer as well. So if any of these fields interest you, you could do more research on them and start learning. And it's okay if you don't really like what you're learning, you can easily switch to something else if it's not something that you're passionate about. In the next video, I'll be doing a video on fields in the tech space that do not require coding. So if you're someone who do, does not like technical stuff and you just want to be in the tech space without actually programming then you could check out and turn on post notifications for my next video don't forget to like and also comment on the field in tech that you'll be going into or the field that you're already doing and don't forget to subscribe as well bye